John's Gospel chapter 5 verses 1 Ioanne Sahareba mekhute tavi pirveli mukhildan tsra mukhlis chatlit Aman bebis shemdek iudevelta dgesasauli iqo da Ieso Jerusalem shiavida Jerusalem shi tsqris karipches dan aris auzi romeltsats ebraulat betkhas da etsodeba da khuti derepani aks Mat sheitswa zalian bevri sneuli brmebi kheibrebi davrdomilebi romlebits tsqlis amgrovas elodnen Troda dro angelozi eshoboda aushi da tsqals amgrovda tsqali rom aimgrovda vins pirveli chavidoda rasenitats ar unda qopili qo ganikurneboda igi qo erti katsi romelts 28 tsele itanjeboda tavisi sneulebit iesom tsoli are rom dainakha mikhda rom didi khnis sneuli qo da kitkha ginda gamojamtelde miugu avantqobma upalu aravinam qavs tsqlis amgrovisas rom aushi chamishvas chems mislamdem sva chadis Utra yesom adeki ai gesheni saretseli da gaiare igi mkhisve gamojan sagda ai go tavisi saretseli da gaiara im dreski shabati iqo Sometimes our English Bible and the Georgian Bible may not say the same thing word for word. Droda dro isi akhol me agmoachero kartuli biblia da inglesuri targmani sitqva sitqvid ertnaeri ar aris khol me. Just like sometimes when I am speaking and there's a translator it's not word for word but the meaning is still the same. Zogjer asi ar ukadagab da targmani ro targmnis sheileba sitqva sitqvid ar iqos magram azri ertia. So my English Bible says that there was crowds of people that were blind and lame and paralyzed. And it says there was a man that had been laying there for 30, uh, 38 years. Jesus walks up to him and said, would you like to be well? And the first thing the man says is, I have no one to help me. Understand, Jesus went to him and he said, do you want what I have for you? And I want this question to be in your mind today. Jesus is asking, do you want what I have for you today in this conference? Surrounded in this, in this pool was people that were paralyzed and lame and, and uh, they were waiting for the waters to be stirred. As the Bible says that an, an angel would come down once a year and stir the waters and whoever was first to jump in the pool would receive their healing or their miracle. Now this man, every year this man was so close but so far away. He was right next to his miracle. Right next to his healing. But he never experienced it. How many times have we felt like we were right on the edge of our prayer being answered? We were on the edge of our breakthrough or the miracle. This man was so close he could smell it. It was right in front of him but he never experienced it. And I believe the reason he never experienced it is this. This man had an issue with dependency. When he was asked the question, would you like to be made whole? He said, I have no one to put me in the pool. I have no one. Say that with me today. I have no one. It was an admission of dependency on someone else 
to help him. He was depending on someone else for his miracle. He was depending on someone else for his breakthrough. Listen to this statement. When you depend on others more than you depend on God, you will never see the fullness that God has for you. When you are depending on others more than you are depending on God, you will have continual paralysis. Amen. Amen. Depending on others will obstruct God's purpose from being fulfilled in our lives. For too long, we have depended on others to help us. We've depended on others to supply our needs. We've depended on others to make us happy. Our joy and happiness doesn't come from out there and other people. But it comes from the inside and knowing like the bishop said earlier who we are in Christ. Too many people have depended upon the government to provide for them. We need to learn to depend upon God. Whether you're Georgian or American. We must all learn to depend upon God and His Word. And I think it's time for us to change our thinking. My God supplies all my needs. My God is my healer. He healer. My destiny does not rest in somebody else's hand. My future does not rest in somebody else's hands. My family does not rest in the hands of someone else. But my future, my family, my financial needs rest in the hands of one who loves me. One who me and redeems me. I am peaceful in the hands of the Lord. Jesus said in John's gospel that, that we are in his hands and no one can snatch us out of his hands. My thought for you today is it's time to let go of our excuses. I don't have anyone to help me. Amen. Amen. I need to break that cycle of dependency. And it's time for the church to step out in faith and believe in God like the bishop mentioned earlier. We must continue to walk and live by faith. This man had been waiting for 38 years. Some of you have been waiting for 10 years. Maybe you've been waiting for five years for your breakthrough. Maybe some of you have been waiting for six long months. But I believe I, got a, I, believe I have a good word for you today. You are next. I believe you are next. Turn to somebody and say, you are next. You are next. Now the Bible said that there was crowds of people, many, many people that were blind and lame and paralyzed. And they were, they were lying there just waiting for someone. Now every one of us have suffered some type of paralysis. Maybe it's not physical paralysis. Maybe it's spiritual paralysis. 
paralysis. Maybe it's emotional paralysis. Life happens. You know, do you know that we in America have problems just like you have problems in Georgia? We're all people. And, and everybody has some type of suffering or problems that they have to face. Sometimes we have unexpected things come up. I'm sure you've never had something unexpected come up here in the church. Oh, I remember one year we were here and the generator caught on fire. You remember? The big generator caught on fire. It's, sometimes things just happen. It catches us unprepared. Maybe water pipes break in your house and you flood and your house floods. Maybe your car breaks down and now you have no transportation. Our bills begin to pile up. Maybe the spouse that you've been committed to suddenly wants to leave and, and uh, betrays your your marriage vows. Maybe your body that has been so strong and healthy suddenly begins to get weak and fall apart. All I want us to see today is that sometimes life has intrusions. And, the, and those things that happen will blind us from the things that God has promised us. Let me remind you what paralysis is. It's a lack of mobility. It's a lack of movement. It could even be a lack of motivation. And you're sitting in here this morning in Tbilisi on uh, September 27th. And maybe you're suffering from paralyzed dreams. Maybe your faith has been paralyzed. Maybe, maybe your ministry or your, your vision has been paralyzed. God spoke to Darlene and I over 30 years ago and gave us a promise. That promise has still not been fulfilled. Kind of reminds me of Abraham. God promised him a child. But it didn't come to pass in nine months. It didn't come to pass in, uh, uh, in nine years. It was many years before the promise came to pass. And sometimes when we don't see it in five years, ten years, our, our faith becomes paralyzed. But I refuse to let go of the promise that God gave us 30 years ago. I refuse to have paralyzed faith. I'm not waiting for someone to help me. I'm waiting for Almighty God to fulfill His promises in our ministry. Does this help anybody today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many times we're plagued by things that will paralyze us. Do you realize that shame will paralyze us? We, we are believers. But we, we have sinned. And we feel so shameful and disappointed in ourselves. And we cry out to God, 1 John 1 and 9. And we know he's faithful and just to forgive us. But we still have to deal with that shame. And we're paralyzed to do something for God because we're living in the shame instead of the promise. 
Religious condemnation will shame us, will paralyze us. Broken relationships will shame us. Unbelief and self-pity will paralyze us. Do you know how many people are paralyzed by the criticisms of other people? Bishop Oleg, it's a wonder that you and I can do anything for God. We've been criticized by everybody. They've told us that we can't do it. They said it's impossible. I told the, the people at, I told the people yesterday at uh, wherever I was at. Yeah, I told them that we had people come by our church and prophesy. They said, you have no business being a pastor. Your water brook has dried up. Your financial supply has dried up. Did they tell us that? They told us to buy a lock and lock the door on our church. And if we're not if we don't know who we are in Christ, that will paralyze your ministry. But if God be for us, who can be against us? If God is on my side, I don't care what the critics out there say. We will not allow critics to paralyze our faith and movement in Christ. We don't have to be constantly uh, uh, affirmed and validated. There are some people that if they don't get a pat on the back and get validated, they, they get paralyzed. Let me give you a Facebook. Let me give you a Facebook alert, a post. Send this out on Facebook. If their praise did not make you, their criticism cannot break you. Amen. I want to say it again. Some of you didn't catch it that time. If their praise does not make you, their criticism cannot break you. Agashena, we are not dependent upon man to put us in the pool. The very one that says, do you want to be made whole, is with us today. He says, I'll take away the paralysis. I'll take away the lameness. I'm here today to heal you. It's amazing. I don't know if it's like this in Georgia, but in America, we're always looking for political solutions. Political solutions. Political solutions. I believe the church can stand alone. We don't need, we don't need our political uh, uh, correctness to make us move forward, or allow us to move forward in Christ. Now, let me give you a little American history lesson here. In America, we have a two-party system. How many knows what those two parties are? Two parties. Say it again. Democrat. Democrat and Republican. And Republican. Republican Lebida Democrat. The Republican Party has a mascot that is represents uh, looks like an elephant. As a mascot Mati logo the Gamos Sahuliaris Republican Lebis Spilo. And the Democratic mascot is a donkey. The Pirike Democrats, Democrat is logo the Gamos Sahulia Viri. But what America needs is not more donkeys. 
Agar pchir deba meti virebi. We don't need more elephants. Arts meti spilu ebi agar pchir deba. We don't need followers of elephants and donkeys. Chen agar pchir deba spilos mim devrebi da viris mim devrebi. We need more followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Chen pchir deba Ieso Christes mim devrebi. We need followers of the Lamb of God. Kravis Ieso Christes mim devrebi. The Lion of the Tribe of Judah. Romani tsari lomi udas tovita tomidan. In America, we call uh, Uncle Sam. That's our government. We call him Uncle Sam. But we don't need Uncle Sam. We have a heavenly father. Amen. Wow, so the, pretty messed up. That is messed up. <laughs> so I believe the solution to George's paralysis I, is Jesus. I may give us one book. When we go into a country to preach, we always stay away from politics. Because we don't want to bring division to the body. We were in Kenya, Africa one year. And there was political uprising all over the nation. And somehow the newspaper found out that Daryl and Darlene Rhodes was staying at a particular hotel. So this, news, this newspaper comes to our hotel and they knock on our door at the hotel and they said, we want to do an interview with you. Well, we thought they wanted to talk about our crusade and our meetings that we were going to have in Kenya. And the first question they ask us. So what do you think about President Moy's decisions on this? Is that right? And we instantly ask the reporter to leave our room that we were not interested. So regardless of your political preference, I don't know what your mascots are. I don't know what your party system is. But I know one thing, Georgia needs Jesus. We need more gospel preaching of, the G of Jesus Christ. We need more pastors that will stand up like this bishop and preach that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus is the answer to financial paralysis in Georgia. Jesus is the answer to unemployment in Georgia. Jesus is the answer to sickness and disease. We need to stop saying, I have no man to help me. Everybody shout, we need more of Jesus. Now we need to get Notice that this man said, someone always gets ahead of me. In other words, I'm always missing my turn. Now, I don't know if you have this on your cell phones, but do you have GPS on your phones here? Mm -hmm. and, and, and when you set, your, you set your GPS to take you somewhere, and if you miss your turn, somebody on the, on the phone says, you missed your turn. Make a U-turn as quick as possible. You've missed your turn. I will be reroutes in 300 feet or And maybe you're here today and you're saying, I've been waiting my turn for 38 years. When will I be next? When will I be next? I believe the Lord's word for us today is 
wanting you to realize we are next. It is our turn. Da upals udarom dres kargat gaigo. Sheni rigit geba. Da shen shem degikne. It's my turn. Chemi rigia. It's time for this church to experience supernatural growth. Da ced am eklesis drodat garom zebunebrivat gaizatos. It's time for this church to experience miracles and signs and wonders. Am eklesis drodat garom nishnebi da sasaulebi mochtes. It's time for this church for to have breakthrough. Es aris am eklesis dro ari ro garo amovites. And it's time for every one of you to experience I am next. I am next. I am next to see my children delivered off of drugs and alcohol. I am next to see my husband sober and serving God. I am ready to be the answer to someone else's prayer. Amen. Amen. Are you ready? Zat khart amistuis. Are you ready? Zat khart amistuis. Are you ready? Zat khart amistuis. Are you going to sit here this morning? Tu ubraut izdebit. And say I have no one to help me. Da ubraut itqui aravin mkhaus ro da mekhmaros. I've come to help you today. Me movedi ro da gekhmaros. I prophesy to you today. Me gitsina sar metqoletos. Put a smile on your face. Gai ghimet amis gamo. Put a shout in your voice. Da shen khma magali shedzakhelebit ganadi deupale. Put a dance in your steps. Because I believe you are next. Shout, I am next. Jesus says, do you want what I have for you? You may be looking at me today and say, that's just old Daryl. He's been coming for 20 years. And when I ask you, would you like to be next? The answer is not, I have no one. Jesus didn't ask you if you could. He said, would you like to be next? The word of God says in Isaiah 46, I am ready to set things right. Isaiah 43 says, I'm about to do something new. In fact, he says, I've already begun to do it. So do you not see it? My question to you today, can you see it? Can you see that God is wanting to do something new today? I don't want to just have another conference. I don't want to come and just preach two or three messages. I preach all the time in, in America. I'm not looking for a place to preach. But I'm looking for a place where people will say, I'm ready for a breakthrough. I'm ready to be next. I believe God is speaking to us today. Are you ready to be next? He wants to do something new. On our television in America, we have all of these shows about renovation, renovating your house. Rebuild and re redo your house. But God doesn't want to renovate you. God doesn't want to rebuild you. He wants to release your future. Now I will give you one more thing this afternoon. Jesus is getting ready to break the rules of expectation. He's going to, buy, he's going to bypass the usual. You see, there was already a system in place where an angel would come down and and uh, trouble the water. Is it system? And Jesus wants to break the rules. He wants to do it a different way. Now Jesus could have picked the man up and threw him in the water himself. Jesus could have went over to the pool and took his fingers and, and stirred the water himself. But Jesus wanted to do something new that day. He bypassed the system. And he tells the, par the, the paralytic, he says, get up. 
Doesn't he understand this man can't walk? This man is paralyzed. But Jesus says, get up. Remember, uh, was it Acts chapter 3, where Peter and John were walking by the gate beautiful. And he had been laying there for years and years and years. And they took him by the hand and raised him up and, and said, arise and walk. So Jesus likes to bypass the system. So this, this paralytic man says, I have no one to help me. Now catch this. Catch this today. Jesus ignored what he said. Jesus ignored what the man said. I'm so glad that Jesus has ignored a lot of things that I've said. There's been things I said. There's been times I've said things out of my mouth that I, I hope God didn't hear. Jesus says, do you want what I have for you? And he says, I can't. I have no one to help me. But Jesus says, I'm going to ignore what you said. I will let those words go. And Jesus, and Jesus releases a word into that man that brought brand new life to him. I believe God has us here today to release a word that will uh, that wants that that God will wants to do to you to raise you up to something new that you've never experienced. God told him to do something that he could not do. And I believe today is a new season. We have been praying for this conference for a long, long time. We've been fasting and praying. And even though it's only four services, I believe God has been preparing us today for a new season. I believe it's a season that our paralysis is coming to an end. I'm not talking about next month. I'm talking about today. When you rise up and leave this house today, I believe there's going to be new vision, new insight, new passion. Ezekiel chapter 2 says, Stand up, son of man. He says, I want to speak to you. And he says, The Spirit can Came into me, came into me, That's and he spoke, and he set me on my feet. That's what God wants to do for you today. Stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. You know why he said to walk? Because he said you're not going back there anymore. You're not going back to that place anymore. Everybody shout, I'm not going back. I'm not going back to what I used to be. You see, I don't live in failure anymore. I don't live in defeat anymore. I know who I am in Christ. I don't have hopelessness anymore. If I'm in Christ, I'm a brand new creation. All things passed away. Pick up your mat and I am walking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes, sometimes we stay in our place of paralysis because we are waiting for God to open the door. So we sit with our arms folded and we sit and wait for God to move. And I believe God is wanting us to move even when we think we're paralyzed. Now, I know you have this in Georgia. I've, I think I've been to some of these places in Georgia. But when you walk up to a particular door, if you keep walking, 
There's a sensor that will recognize that you're close to the door and the door opens automatically. You have those here, right? Huh? Okay. And, and sometimes, what would happen if you got right up to the edge of that door and you just stood there? Say, God, open the door. I'm just waiting for you to open the doors. God, can you hear me? Doors aren't opening. And God says, you dummy, just keep on walking. Just keep walking. If you keep walking, the doors will open. But we're so paralyzed that we're afraid to move. Can I tell you, out of all the mission trips that we've ever taken, we never had enough money to make our trips. We've never had the money in our hands before we made our airline uh, arrangements. Before we made our hotel arrangements, we just went ahead and made our plans and said, we're going to Georgia. We're going to Tanzania. We're going, we're going to Ukraine. We're, we're, we're going to Uganda. We're going to Cuba. We're going to Myanmar. We, we, just, we, just, we, just, we never had the money. But we know what God put in our heart. And when we start walking, we start walking and then the finances begin to come in. Sometimes the money didn't come in until we got home. But we refuse to allow our paralysis to keep us from moving in what God's ordered us to do. Darlene and I are not rich people. We've gone weeks and weeks and weeks without a salary. But it didn't keep us from coming to Georgia this year. We just trust God. One time we were leaving farming, to, we were leaving our hometown uh, to go to the airport. We didn't have enough money to come to Georgia. We didn't know what we were going to do. But we knew God said, don't stay here in your paralysis. And we live about an hour and 15 or 20 minutes from the airport. We were almost to the airport and we got a phone call. And the individual on the other end of the phone said, where are you? And we said, well, we're almost at the airport. We said, we have to leave in two hours. Our flight leaves in two hours. He said, stay right there. I'll be there in an hour. And he came driving up to the airport and he ran into the terminal. And he found us and he handed us just the right amount of money we needed to complete our trip. We've got to stop making excuses. I have no man. I have, I have no one to help me. I have no one to pick me up. Oh, yes, we do. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. He wants to help you. He wants to pick you up. He wants to heal you. Amen. 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 I think I'll stop right there. We need to stop making excuses. Darlene and I would be nowhere if we waited for man to help us. We walk by faith and not by man helping. Yes, man is a channel. And thank God for channels. But we don't look to channels, we look to the source. My wife went to church every time the doors were open when she had a heart condition that said, stay home. 
چه مغلس گولیز داوود با کنن سخشی و نکوپیلی کم مگرام اول کویراس اکلیسیش دادی. She couldn't even stand for praise and worship. She had to sit. که لطفا لطفی سر دگاندی دب از دروز اونم جداری کو پخش زورد که بوده. And I would say, honey, stay home today. You'll be fine. We'll be fine. دو ویم نبودی رو دارچی سخشی. آرا اوش از اوش نوت از گاو. She said, no, I'm not staying home today. Could be the day I get my miracle. راویت سیکر با درس از دگی آرود ساوپالی ساساوس. Can I tell you, God rewards faithfulness. It's it from Merti Erdgul Lebas. Don't stay home because don't stay home because you're not feeling well. سخشی نو دارچی بیم از گاو درس لگات زورد اوش نوت از گاو. Come to church and let the anointing of God get all over you. Amen. 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 She kept saying, today could be my miracle. And you know what the day finally came? It wasn't in one year. It wasn't in two years. Three years, four years, five years. But seven? In eight years, she got her miracle. She did not allow the paralysis to keep her bedridden. Can I hear a good amen? Let's stop making excuses. I have no one to help me. There's no one to help me. But God is a very present help in your time of need.